how to sell B2B SaaS using LinkedIn. This is exactly what I'm talking about in this video. So if you've got your software as a service company or you're working for one and you need to sell that to those all those B2B customers, you're in the right place because I'm going to go through it using a very particular example because I had a friend of mine reach out to me and ask specifically for this thing. So I'm going to help him out and hopefully we'll provide you a very live, vivid example of how this then needs to be approached and uh, done. Okay. Before you even start selling the thing, you have to have your profile set up really well. That means to have, that means that you need to have your social presence that would show people that you are actually legit. You're not some sort of a scam or a spam. You're out there to build genuine relationships because that's how business to business sales work. They work in the long run. And before you even can approach people you're about to sell to, you need to go through certain levels of communication, certain of levels of trust and build enough rapport before they even are ready to hear out from you. Because imagine that you're walking on the street, you got somebody jumping out of nowhere and asking you, it's like, dude, I've got this amazing piece of software. It will help you to earn that much money in that much time. You have to pay me like 2K right now. And if it doesn't work, I'll give you your money back. Like you look at the guy as a madman and you just walk away. But for some reason, we think that it's different online. So that's really not the case. You still need to go out there and create this brand and this presence before you even approach this thing. So you have to fill up your LinkedIn profile. I have my LinkedIn profile filled up here. So a very specific target audience. I work with full service agencies and I help them with very specific types of things. So for your SaaS, and you pinpoint a very specific type of an audience that you're working with. So in my case, the example I was given, so it's a management member management platform for indoor golf courses. And um, I'm going to jump right into it right now because this video is actually dedicated to find the, finding the decision makers and basically the approach you would have to take uh, going forward with them. So what I do is as follows. So I know that my target audience is located in three countries. So UK, Ireland, and Australia. For the sake of this example, I'm going to go with UK because I've already done a bit of a prior research. What I'm gonna do now, and um, I'm going to get to indoor, and I should have them here. Yeah, indoor golf clubs, UK. So I'm going through a list of indoor clubs here so i've got this urban golf t box london and this is the one i previously picked t box go uk urban golf so the idea is to find decision makers yeah so the people that work there and linkedin it happens to be is the best place for doing this so i'm going to their website and i'm trying to find the any connection um, opportunities here but only got twitter only got facebook and instagram here let's see if i got any linkedin going on here and they also don't have it listed out here fortunately that doesn't need to be a problem because all we can do now is that we go type in this then in the search t but i'm actually going to leave this window t box co uk and then all i'll do is type in linkedin so let's see how that works. And I've got this UK page here. I'll see if it loads for me now because it, yeah, it's some weird bad request. But let's see if I go to AE edition of this then. Okay. Yeah, that seems to be working. So there we go. I'm on this page and like to confirm that I'm actually here. See this logo. Yeah. It looks very, very, very similar. In fact, it's identical. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's the same place. You can also confirm the address here, but it seems like it's the right place. So as I said, I need the decision maker. I see that it's only got 13 employees, so it's pretty small. I presume that I'll be talking to the owner. So I go to people here and then depending on how you can see it right away, he's the co-founder guy, uh, sales coordinator golf instructor, sales coordinator, co-founder. So I would probably need one or the other. I'd either either need Liam or Harry. 
So the idea is that uh, I'm going to open up Liam's profile, go directly to his page, and uh, well, yeah, you can see it's definitely the place, the T Box London. So now I'm going to go into the stuff that he's posted about, yeah, and I'm actually going to go here into his recent post and um, basically comment on it. I'm, I would like the post and I would leave leave a meaningful message, you know, I would say, oh man, I hope you will find the right golf instructor and I'm commenting here for engagement to help you guys out, to help the algorithm pick up, because that's exactly what we're doing, to help the algorithm pick up the activity under this post. So it gets a little bit more impressions and potentially it helps to find the guy they're looking for. So that is the kind of value you'd be giving this per person before even getting on their radar. At the same time, and I'm going back to the stuff that I mentioned at the very start of this video, once you comment on this thing, the slim guy, chances are he will go and check you out because like, who is this nice guy helping me out? He go, away, he go ahead and check out your profile and then he would see your profiles filled up with pure valuable stuff that could potentially help their business. Yeah, in our case, it's the member management platform. It would provide specific value for a very specific type of audience and literally outline the deliverable. So again, that's why it's so important to know exactly what your offer is for your SaaS company, for your software as a service company, and uh, know the deliverables that you deliver have some social proof as well that really helps because amazing things happen yeah the guy is checking out your profile now he is re reading this stuff he's not pitching you're not he's not getting pitched but he is reading the stuff that you're that you posted out there and you've given him value so he's checking out your profile and it's not infrequent that that way you have people reaching out directly and actually asking you about the services that you offer that for them because it is just so trimmed, your offer is so trimmed that you're able to give value just like that. And they see the value for themselves because once you really pinpoint the pain they've got there going on, once you really know the target audience just clicks with them and then they just reach out. However, let's suppose that it's actually we're in this negative case here. So we need some more in interaction. So suppose that I'm leaving a comment here and all he does is that he just likes the thing. Okay. So he just likes my comment. Brilliant. He liked the comment. He's seen it. So he's reacted. What I would do next, I would potentially leave two more comments, you know, maybe wait for another, uh, for another post or maybe go back because in this case, he's got a few there. So he's, he, he's had this post from a month ago, but I would basically kind of space it out in a few days, you know, and just show how it's going in case he's replied and like was very, very grateful. Yeah. So he's replying saying, Oh man, thank you so much, etc., etc." then you can click right away and like send him the request connection request and um, you know, just say, oh yeah, glad to help. So you would basically reply to him, not in the thread, not in the, in this uh, post thread anymore, but you would, you know, take the conversation into the DMS and then he would most likely accept your connection request. And then inside the DMS, this is when you start talking to them. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, that's how it goes. So I wish to be a little bit more specific, but I don't have a specific golf example because right now I'm just giving you this like theory. So I'm going to go into my inbox and actually show you uh, the type of the DM message that you would help have with your potential client. Of course, it's coming from my background, which is from the times when I used to have a SEO link building agency when I worked with SaaS companies. So I was on actually on the other side of this. So I wasn't trying to help um, SaaS companies to sell their B2B service, uh, uh, but actually I was pitching SaaS companies. So I'm just going to show you how this D DM uh, game actually works. So basically I'm just connecting with him here and I'm asking like, how are things are going at, the, at his company? This is not the best pitch ever, not the best connection request, but it worked. He's saying, oh yeah, great, great, nice to meet you. Everything's wonderful. And I'm just saying like, oh man, thank you for accepting my request. Do you post on LinkedIn much? I think your insights would be gold. And I'm saying this because I can see that he's in this company for a while, that he's posted something in the past 
And I'm sure that he's got a lot of a lot of things to share about like their progress and the stuff they do because they're doing really interesting stuff. And basically, I'm saying, see you around, my man. You know, so I'm just getting the conversation going. The amount of conversation and all of that stuff that you have really depends on the niche and depends on the decision makers and all that stuff. So ideally, you have to be thinking about um, what's the quickest way to help the transaction scale, uh, to make it fall through. What's the quickest way to sell? Because obviously, we don't want to spend too much time conversing with somebody if they're you know, ready to go on a call with us and they're ready to buy. Usually, you will see this by the way they are asking questions about your offer. So if they start asking questions right away, you just book a call with them, 15 minute call, and then you can quickly call, uh, talk through certain points, ask them certain questions, pre-qualify them if it's necessary, and then get them on the sales call afterwards. Yeah, get them on the strategy call, book something for the next day or next week, whatever, and have them already um, learn more, like learn more about their business and how your solution can help their business, okay? But here, I'm just having a bit of a conversation. And um, you can see the dates here. So December 19th, December 30th. And he's saying, hey, man, I don't post much, but I probably should. I would love to chat to you about uh, sometime about SEO. Maybe I could use the services. That's pretty cool. That is exactly what I'm talking about. And partially the reason why he's doing this is because during this time, every single day, I'm also posting content that would help any size company rank better on Google. So essentially, I'm doing something that helps them to grow their business. Yeah, so I'm showing that I've, I know the stuff, I know my stuff that I can deliver. Like he sees this, he sees that I have this knowledge about how this whole search engine optimization thing works. So this is something you do as well. Yeah, so if you have your SaaS operating, helping businesses with whatever they're doing, it's your job to provide those insights for these businesses, educate them, yeah, share some previous results of your work. Basically, get those touch points and associate your brand with something positive that businesses can have, okay? So you basically have developed this omnipresence. So you're talking to them inside their DMs. You're talking to them um, using your content out there on LinkedIn. So intera they interact with you as well. That is really, really helpful. And people buy from people they know, trust, and like. Yeah, so, and it just so happens that the more more times we meet with somebody, unless we clearly dislike them for whatever reasons, the more times we meet we meet somebody, the more they become familiar, and the more familiar they are, the more the more likely we buy from them because we're already a little more associating with them, you know. So, in this case, because I've I've developed this content strategy and I've been like in connection with him and I haven't been trying to pitch him anything, just getting to know the guy, getting to know what he does. He is, he is already interested in himself and I don't need to, I don't need a second invitation. I'm just sending out my calendar link for a 20 minute call. Yeah. So oh, that's all I need. Yeah. 20 minutes. So we chat, meet each other once again and so on. So again, during this call, you learn a little bit more about their business, connect with them even a little bit further and see if, if there's any way you can help their business. If there is a way you can help their business, you schedule a strategy call, which is more like an hour, an hour and a half, depending on what your offer is, on what your B2B service is, uh, B2B SaaS service, and that's how you basically make it work. So going back to um, the whole kind of framework, the whole picture, absolutely essential to have your LinkedIn profile dialed in. Like this stuff wouldn't work Having a professional photo is one thing, but actually having a clear headline where you explain, because people want to, like, they check you out, they, they need to make, like, imagine yourself looking at somebody's profile. You look at their picture, like, are they ugly, you know? Like, what, is the picture professional? Okay, he's not ugly. The picture looks professional. Then they check out your background image, like, what is it all about? Then they read your headline, what is it all about? And then they can go further inside the profile if it makes sense for them, if they got time. So really dial in this whole LinkedIn profile thing before you even start pitching anything, okay? Then find the decision makers. Like in this case, I used Google external um, search. Yeah, because it makes sense. I mean, right now, if I look at the guy, I can pretty much like, uh, let's see if he mentions golf here. Yeah, so he's got this uh, golf stuff going on. Let's actually go uh, real quick. So I have a... I give you everything there is. 
So another way basically to find these guys is to go inside the sales navigator. The way you do it is pretty simple. So we figured out that we only want to talk to co-founders and potentially founders, maybe marketing directors. Is it, is, is it possible? Maybe directors. Um, let's play with this. So we go to geography and type in United Kingdom. And now we're going to go and say current job title will be owner, owner and co-owner, co-owner. You can even say co-founder or whatever, founder, you can do all that, whatever they want to call themselves. So we do co-founder as well. I have it already, co-founder, co-owner. And then we go and type in golf here. So basically, once you type in golf here in this upper search bar, you would have all the profiles that correspond to these settings and that also have golf included in them. OK, so let's see what shows up. So we get 1K results uh, advisory council member. But the problem is that um, it would obviously include anybody who says, that, oh, I like to play golf on the weekend, you know, or something like that. So we really want to trim it down to two, 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 two. Let's see what else he's got there. See, that's why it's a little bit tricky with, with golf. T-Box, United Kingdom. Like, is he, what else was he? Fashion experience. Mm -hmm. Facility, maybe facility. Maybe we can use facility as well. So once we start trimming out these searches, we want to, we can use what is called Boolean searches and you can read more about them here uh, directly on LinkedIn. So you type in, so they're basically your search operators. Okay. You can use them to tell LinkedIn exactly what you're looking for. So we can say, and facility. So that way we have, cause I'm, I'm using this search term because Liam here is using the term golf facility. So I'm presuming that this is some form of a term that people can be using together in order to describe business owner. Okay, that looks a lot better. Arvin Aviation, privately owned limited company. Okay, that looks a little bit aviation. But you see how it's become a lot better. A lot better. Maybe he's got this indoor because I mentioned indoor, right? No, he doesn't mention this is indoor. So anyway, it takes a bit of it takes a bit of creativity. Yeah. And then once you find a few of those, you can. Yeah, it looks a lot better. You see golf, white ball golf founder. So that is really, really good. So right away, it, it's become a lot easier. Yeah, just reaching out to these guys. And now all you do is that you go to his profile and um, Oh yeah, what, what the cool thing is that you can also use with LinkedIn is that you go into spotlights and then you can literally have LinkedIn filter out everybody who's posted in the last 30 days. So it means it's kind of probably easier to connect with these guys because they're actively posting more active, but so to speak, than any, any others. So you've got 74 um, guys here, which is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So if you've got yourself like a 10% conversion rate, it's, it's very, very solid. And, uh, and then once you run up these out of these, you would basically have to kind of have the DM, DM game going without any posting, you know, so you have to bring in, like you might check their website and reach out or do something different, but yeah, it's, um, it's a little bit different than the method. Still, the idea is the same. You have to connect with them and, um, go through various conversation stages before you even I in the position to pitch them anything. So yeah, again, so you go to this profile, club manager, Malden Golf Club. Oh man, he's pretty popular, this guy. Oh yeah, so you see he's like making all these things. And the cool part is that once you, once you develop this relationship and once you got a really amazing product, like you never know how many other golf folks like this, this one guy can introduce you to. I mean, that's the whole power of building a proper relationship, um, getting all these people you know, connecting with them in a meaningful way and really giving them anything before trying to take a, 
take stuff away from them. And I understand that your SaaS company is great and everything that you offer value and so on and so forth, but you know how say selling is seen. So you really want to offer that value first, because once you do amazing things happen and sales almost like take care of themselves. Okay, guys, I hope this video about how to sell your B2B SaaS to other companies using LinkedIn has been helpful. I'd really appreciate a like. I'd really appreciate a subscription. And if you need any help, reach out to me. I'll help you out. See you in the next video.